Hello students, myself Raghi, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in ABS Engineering College, Ghaziabad. Today, in the Optical Communication Lecture Series, I am going to discuss before you types of ray and electromagnetic mode theory for optical propagation. So, types of rays, the content to be covered in this particular lecture is type of rays, acceptance angle for skew rays, electromagnetic mode theory for optical propagation. In that, we will go through the electromagnetic waves. Now, types of rays. As we know that different types of rays propagate within, inside the optical fiber. The types are axial ray, meridional ray and the skew rays. Till now what we have discussed is the meridional ray. The, um, the numerical aperture acceptance angle what we have calculated till now in the till the previous lecture are on the or on the basis of meridional ray. And now we are having to uh, want to have the knowledge of skew rays and the axial ray. Axial ray are the simplest form of ray and it travels along the axis of the fiber and stays all the time along the axis. That means if we consider if we consider this is our optical fiber core we are, I am drawing only the core structure here. If we consider this as a core of the optical fiber and this is the fiber axis. So, the ray which is traveling along the optical fiber axis or along the parallel to the optical fiber axis are called as the axial rays. And this is the fastest ray among all the rays which are, are traveling inside the optical fiber. So, this is also the fastest ray because it takes the less time. The time taken by it to reach the exit point of the optical fiber from the entry point is the fastest one because the path velocity of light can't be different for any of the rays but the path taken by the rays are different that's why this ray takes the shortest path that's why it reached the destination that is exit point of the optical fiber fastest than anyone else again i am repeating the velocity for uh, for the rays are not different but the path which the this rays follows are different and in contrast of this uh, axial ray takes the shortest path that's why it will in, uh, reach the exit of the optical fiber earlier than any other rays so if anyone asks us the difference between the this, uh, this rays then we can definitely mention this point also now the skew rays skew rays does not pass through the center it reflects off from the core cladding boundaries and again bounces around and outside of the core it takes somewhat similar shape of a spheric or spiral of helical path here yeah, we can see that the skew rays it does not cross the center of the fiber axis. If it cross the center of the fiber axis, then in that case, this is the center of the axis. This red point which I am drawing drawn here just, this is the center of the axis. If the skew rays does not cross the center of the axis, this is the important limitation of the skew rays. It undergoes multiple reflections. And this angle plays a very important role. It, uh, and about that we will discuss in the next slide. And thus it follows the zigzag path around the axis. It does not crosses the 
fiber axis and when we talk about the meridional rays meridional ray enters the core and passes through the axis when the core surface is parallel it is will be reflected to pass through the center so here we can see see in the figure that meridional ray crosses the axis of the fiber if this is the this line is the axis of the fiber and the meridional ray crosses and if we take the see the surface here also we can see it crosses the center of the so this is the important difference between the and if we further try to see what's the major difference that we can see that is in the skew rays multiple reflections are occur so the way ray become smooth thin in the case of a smooth is in the case of a skew rays than any other type of rays due to this reflections now i am talking that this angle is very important one this angle is the very important one so whenever we say this is the structure of propagation of light ray within the skew rays this angle is known as 2 gamma and that gamma is the angle is of reflection for skew rays within the fiber this is the angle of reflection the skew rays within the fiber and as per that we can calculate the acceptance angle for the skew rays so now the acceptance angle of the skew rays can be given by sin inverse under root n1 square minus n2 square divided by cos gamma so we can see that since the gamma cos gamma cos gamma is the parameter which decides the acceptance angle for the skew rays and acceptance angle is basically the angle which decide the light gathering capacity of any fiber light gathering capacity of fiber can be decided by the acceptance angle so if the acceptance angle is greater angle is greater then definitely the light gathering capacity is greater is greater and it depends upon the cos gamma and gamma is the angle gamma is the angle of reflection here so if we are and it is in the denominator side so what we can say we have to the gamma is the angle which can decide the acceptance angle of the skew uh, fiber and definitely it decide the light gathering capacity since cos gamma is less than 1 always the higher value which can be have is 1 or less than 1 so acceptance angle is higher for skew rays as compared to meridional ray so if the ray is skew then its acceptance angle is higher than meridional rays and if the acceptance angle is higher due to the cos gamma only because cos gamma value can't be greater than 1 the maximum value is 1 so and uh, we all know the acceptance angle for the meridional rays is given by sin inverse under root n1 square minus n2 square and if we divide for the skew rays it is get divided by the cos gamma and cos gamma value is always less than 1 or in the maximum case it will be 1 so we can easily see that the acceptance angle or in turn the light gathering capacity for the skew rays is higher than that, that of a meridional rays so let's have do a numerical related to that for better understanding i am just writing one thing the optical fiber has an of numerical aperture of 0.4 and 
you have to compare the acceptance uh, angle for the skew rays and the meridional rays it is given that change of direction by 100 degree at each reflection so skew rays which change direction by 100 degree at each reflection so this angle is 100 degree that is 2 gamma is given as 100 degree So gamma is equal to 100 degree. So gamma should be equal to. Now, since Na is equal to 0.4, and Na is given by under root n1 square minus n2 square. Now for meridional rays. Acceptance angle. is equal to under root and sine inverse n1 square minus n2 square which is equal to our Na. So we can easily write sine inverse Na here and when we solve it we get the value as 23.6 degree and when we solve it for the skew rays Acceptance angle should be equal to sine inverse under root n1 square minus n2 square by our cos gamma. Now we can easily write at the place of under root n1 square minus n2 square we can write Na, Na upon cos gamma. And when we solve it, the answer will be approximately equal to 38.5 degrees. So we can easily see, here also we can see that for the same numerical aperture, the acceptance angle for the skew rays is higher than the meridional ray. So light gathering capacity of a skew rays is higher than the meridional ray. Now uh, comes to the electromagnetic mode theory for the optical propagation. So before going to the optical electromagnetic mode theory for optical propagation, first we have to discuss about the electromagnetic wave propagation. Electromagnetic wave propagation. So what is the condition for wave propagation within the optic normal waves, electromagnetic wave? For that, first we have to go through the electromagnetic Maxwell equation. Maxwell equation we have studied for various conditions that for zero conductivity, for the conductivity, for the lossless medium, for the in the integration form, in the differentiation form, various conditions, various type of electromagnetic Maxwell equations are available with us for various multiple conditions. But here we have taken the Maxwell equation in the differentiative form with zero conductivity. So the first Maxwell equation, which is in the form of a curl equation, is del cross E should be equal to minus del B upon del T. Del cross L should be del T upon del T and then the di divergence equation del dot D is equal to 0, del dot B is equal to 0. But if we consider for the conductivity one, the equation will be change. This is for the zero conductivity. So whatever calculation I am going to do, is for the zero conductive. I am not including the conductivity conditions here. Also, we know that D is equal to epsilon E. All are in the vector form. We should consider all the equations in the vector form here. V is equal to mu H where epsilon is over permittivity which is given by epsilon naught into epsilon r. This is the absolute permittivity and this is the relative permittivity. Absolute permittivity is the permittivity of a air or vacuum which is normally equal to 1 and relative permittivity changes as per the dielectric used by us. Similarly, this is the permeability 
and it is given by mu is equal to mu not into mu r mu not is the permittivity or at free space or air which is equal to 1 and this is the relative permeability which changes as per the medium now just to solve first what we have to do is to we should take the curl equation curl of the curl maxwell equation so this is the curl equation we can take any of the so electromagnetic wave equation we will what we get is either in the form of electric field or in the form of a magnetic field so first of all we have to take the curl of this particular curl equation so when we take the curl of this particular curl equation what we have we get del cross i am just doing it for the electric field and for magnetic field it will uh, you will do as an assignment so what is this minus del b upon del t so we can have this minus minus del of del b upon del t minus and del by del t on the outer side then it will be del cross b so from the equation when we see del cross b del cross b or del cross h at the place of del cross h what we can write when we try to write this equation in the terms of b so we can have del cross b by mu is equal to del d by del t and in the place of d also we can write as del by del t epsilon e so del cross b can be written as mu epsilon del e by del t so at the place of del cross b we can substitute this value so i'm just going to do that for now minus del by del t and at the place of del cross b what we have calculated in the previous slide that is mu e del e upon del t i am going to substitute that so it is mu epsilon del e upon del t and this will be written as minus mu e del square e upon del t square similarly this can be done for the magnetic field equation and we will get this equation this is in the similar way by taking the curl of the this equation first of all we have done for the del cross e by taking the curl of second equation we can have this relation and now this has been solved ki my uh, del cross into del cross e should be equal to but what will be the for del cross del cross e so using the identity that is if uh, a curl of any vector already curl when we do curl del cross del cross y it can be resolved as del del dot y minus del cross y so i am go we are going to have resolve this in the similar manner so in that case what can be written as if we consider y e y as e what is written in the y is a similar e here so it can be written as we can this the equation and this equation is the same so we have to write this like so it can be del dot e minus del cross e of we we see that del dot e del dot e value if we write del dot d 
in the terms of e so how can we write del d is equal to epsilon e so it can be written as e is equal to 0 this implies del dot e should be equal to 0 so i am going to put this condition in our equation now so this will be equal to 0 so what is left with us minus del cross e so if we write try to write it minus del cross e is it is this one and and this is equal to minus epsilon del cross e del t square so, so we can write it as minus mu e del cross e upon del t square minus minus get cancelled from both the side so now we are having the non-dispersive wave equation in this form del cross e is equal to mu e del cross e by del t square similarly by doing this short of calculation we can calculate for the ma uh, magnetic field also so you can do this as an assumed assignment and now comes the wave equation with scalar not generalized equation for the wave equation and it is written in the form of square wave equation del cross psi should be equal to 1 by vp square del cross psi upon del t square where vp is our phase velocity and when we compare this is with the wave equation achieved by us in the form of magnetic electric field so it can be written as this one so 1 by vp square is same as mu e 1 by vp square should be same as mu e epsilon so vp can be written as 1 by vp should be equal to 1 by under root mu epsilon so this is the equation for wave velocity phase velocity in a planar wave guide described by cartesian coordinate or cylindrical polar coordinate we can write the laplacian factor in the this form in the cartesian coordinates in this form and in the polar card coordinates this form and after solving the wave equation we get the wave equation solution in this form where um, this is the our amplitude and omega is our angular velocity t is the time k is the propagation vector and r is the coordinate point at which field is observed or we can have k is our propagation constant which is given by 2 pi upon lambda where lambda is the optical wavelength and 2 pi already we know uh, these are the references for this lecture thank you for watching this lecture